What separates it from the dorms for the you? Dorms? What makes it different? Mostly the people. I think if you stuck, stuck the co-op people in the dorms, you'd have a co-op in a dorm building. And I think if you stuck the dorm people in the co-ops, you'd have the dorms in the co-op building. Um, the people mostly make it different. The, uh, the environment and the structure of the, uh, of the co-op, I think, helped to make it different. But I think it's mostly just people's attitude when they uh -huh. come in here. Uh -huh. uh, I decided I wanted to meet more people, and uh, so I decided co-op was the best place. The dorms, um, they're more, mostly freshmen or sophomores, and so I wanted older people or crazier people. In here, first because it's cheap, and then I'm just glad here because it's... It's just a nicer breed of people, basically. Okay. Then How do you feel about living in a scene, in a triple? Ah, okay. Well, living in a triple is is rough, kind of, because there are two people around all the time, and there's no privacy at all. And um, once you oh, overcome that, which is, isn't that bad. Does living in a scene, as opposed to living... Have you, have you ever lived in any one of the other buildings? I lived in Hartford Hansen for a week, and that was really... Um, it felt like kind of like a hotel room. It wasn't it wasn't homey or roomy or nice or, or warm and, uh -huh. and uh, stuff like that. This place mostly because um, it's not as uniform as let's say Hardman Hanson. I see. The furniture and stuff like that. Okay. Did you ever live anyplace else? Just a week in Hardman Hanson. And you didn't like it either. No, I felt I don't know. It didn't feel like home. It, every time you go to the bathroom, whatever you have to take all your stuff with you, you can't just. So you have a bathroom in this room. I'm pretty impressed with the whole thing. It works out well. And uh, just the fact that you're able to work with people, and um, the people that you live with are the people that are cooking your food, type thing. And um, it's good. It's a good feeling that you don't have to to rely on anyone else, but the people you're living with and your friends. And in the work manager's office here, a work manager for the co-op is Glenn Zuckman. Can, can you tell me, Glenn, what work manager means here at the co-op? Yeah. Being work manager. Well, there are 450 people who live here, and each of them does four hours a week of work. Yeah, the work manager is the person who allocates people to various kitchen shows and other shows in the co-op. I see. Okay, now, what jobs do you need getting done here? What 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 do the students do here at the co-op? The primary thing that we do is we run the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We serve three meals a day, seven times a week. And it takes about half of our people just to run that. Uh, yeah, I see other jobs like apartment cleanup and... Uh, Special activities. What uh, what are those jobs? Those jobs you also that you assign? Right. We keep the place clean, which is the part of the cleanup that you mentioned. Uh, we have an office. We have a co-op store, which we run, and we have our own cashiers working in there. Uh, and special activities and gardening. Okay. What kind of things does basically the store provide? Shit food. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. <laughs> so it's basically junk, munchies and stuff like that? Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. And can you answer the question about what does the store run on a profit? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much of a profit, but I know it makes a profit. Do you sell the non co -opers? Eight, nine, ten. What? Do you sell the non co -opers? Um, yeah, uh, no, we're not supposed to. Okay, here we are in a Robeson room. Well, Robeson is one of the older buildings here at the co-op, and uh, we're going to be talking to Kevin, who lives here at the co-op. <laughs> Tell me, Kevin, why did you move into the co-op? Well, I basically, I moved into the co-op because I wanted to move out of the house, number one, and number two, I wanted to be closer to school. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of convenience. Matter of study. convenience? Um, what, was, what were the main selling points of the co-op to you? Main selling points was that, number one, it was inexpensive, relatively inexpensive. Number two, um, people seemed very congenial. And number three, there were absolutely no restrictions on what I had to do. Would you be interested in, like, finding out if there are other cooperative organizations, like, um, that aren't student-oriented? Would you go to live in a cooperative organization after you leave here? Have you found it to be a... I don't a, think so. I don't think so. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a good um, situation when you're a student because all the people here have one common uh, 
point, and that is their students. Mm -hmm. You can rally around that point, you can do anything you want with it, but it's, it's quite a binding point. I mean, school is something very central to all of us here, because we're all students. But if you, um, and we all have the main concern of trying to get through school with as little hassle as possible, and this is an ideal situation. You have to put up with some things, but then it, it, uh, you tend to be more cooperative because you are on the same boat. And you have a common interest as such, whereas people on the outside, the outside, people who are not students, I think, tend to have less of a common interest, obviously, because they, they, they aren't all one thing. They aren't all students, or they aren't all mm -hmm. musicians, or whatever. So I would think that you'd have uh, a more um, divided uh, um, membership, resident membership, mm -hmm. at, at a regular housing. So I, I don't think it would work as well, mm -hmm. and I don't think it'd be as pleasurable. And you live here in Hardman Hansen. Okay. Why did you choose to live here in Hardman Hansen instead of a scene or rose? Well, when I first came here, um, I looked around, and initially I, I had wanted to live in a scene, and um, it just worked out. The rooms were nice. I thought the rooms were nicer in here. They were more suited to my type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. now, the room I'm in now, this is a result of being of having seniority, you know, the room, you get a better room, or you can't, you have the ability to get a better room as because you've lived here long time. This is classified as a suite, because there's another room on the other side. I uh, see the wood paneling, though. How did the wood paneling come onto this room? Oh, I, I put it there. I, I paid for it. Uh, it's a, and it's, it's going a, to stay when you leave? It's going to stay, right. It's a permanent addition to the room. Somewhat of a donation, except, I mean, for the time I'm here, it makes a, the room look really nice, and I enjoy it, too. We're here with Mike Warner, who is president of the board of directors here at the Cooperative Association. And tell me, Mike, what does being president of the board of directors of the co-op mean? Well, it means that I'm responsible for watching over all the other board, all the other board members, making sure that they complete their duties, uh, making sure that this organization functions and runs as a co-op. Uh, we're a $3.5 million corporation. Uh, we control the students. We control that money. The assets are mostly this building, and we're responsible for making sure it continues to exist and that it exists in, in reasonable form. Okay, now now you are a student here at UCLA, right? That's correct. Okay. Full-time student. All, all the board members are full-time students. All the board members are full-time students, so this is like a, a responsibility that you've taken on above and you know, beyond. These are like um, experience that you're getting. Correct. Um, the normal work requirement at the club is four hours a week. A lot of the board members will put in upwards of 20 hours a week. Um, it's entirely voluntary. There's no there's no compensation other than uh, getting yelled at by some of the people or, or uh, uh -huh. there's no there's no monetary compensation. Right. But you are the head of the co-op, the legal head of the co-op. Right, As president of the, of, of the board, you're yeah. the end all. We're a legal corporation. We're, we're responsible for any lawsuits that would occur. We're just like the board of directors of any major corporation, except that we're not a major corporation. Hi, Dennis. How are you doing? Hi, Jessica. How are you? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Tell you what? You're assistant manager here at Indeed. the co-op, right? Of course. Right? Okay, how did you become involved with the co-op here in L.A.? My brother told me about it. He lived here for four years. So and you... I came up here and I started playing basketball with, with all the... Uh, all the uh, co-op jocks, and uh, okay. that's how I met the co-op, uh -huh. and I came and lived here. You lived here then? You actually did live here? Lived here for five years. Okay, so how did you become a paid employee? Um, the old manager decided that he was going to need more help when he started putting up this building, and he asked me if I wanted to work, mm -hmm. and I said no. And uh, then I became a conscientious objector, and I needed two years service oh, of alternative service, and I started working here. Oh. I asked him if it was okay if I just worked two years, and he said it was. And so how long and have you been, been here for six? Here? Six years. Indeed. All right. So you like the co-op? Yeah, I really like the co-op. Good, good. Why does the co-op? I mean, it's, it's my understanding that the cooperative association is owned and run by the students. Why does the co-op need paid professional uh, employees? Uh, basic continuity. Um, people move into the co-op, they, you know, elevate themselves to positions like board of directors, then they leave, and there's a kind of constant influx and, I don't know, outflux, whatever. People coming and going all the time, and you need people here just to keep it in, the continuity going, knowing what the precedents are and how to run the place. Uh -huh. Have you noticed any change in co-opers? Yes. Being here for six years? 
since like the expansion, I understand that, that the co-op was uh, one or two buildings, and now we have this tall seven-story building in addition to the other two buildings. The expansion is exactly the way I would classify it. It's just gotten bigger. You know, we used to have 200, and then we tore down land here that used to be here, and we had 150. Uh -huh. And then we put this up, now we have 450. And it's just a, a, a broader base. There are more people, more people who would have gone to the dorms, mm -hmm. or, or maybe even apartments, I don't know. But just, just more types of people rather than uh, a, a complete change in the people. There are still some of the same types of people. Okay. What would you What would you describe as the cooperative attitude here, or the cooperative being? It's, it's formal and um, um, open. People are, are more into different trips rather than like a fraternity where you're just into your little social numbers or something. And in dorms where it's just a huge number of people, very impersonal. Here, you know, a co-op has little wings and the buildings are different. And, and there are cliques for sure, but it, it's, it's I don't know, they're more open cliques. The people are, are more open to each other. Alan Hertz has asked us to consider allowing him to participate in paper bump night. Now, I think we should consider it in terms of principle as well, whether we are going to allow people who are not current members but will be here during the summer to participate in paper bump night. Discussion. We're talking with Gary Bach, who's a, a Memcom person. What are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm a member of the uh, membership uh, committee here at the co-op. Yeah. Okay, what does the membership committee do? Well, you, uh, as, as you saw tonight, you, you might think not very much. Uh, normally, it isn't this bad, it isn't this uh, dull. Um, basically, our job is to take care of disputes in the co-op. When uh, various members get into conflicts, they come and they settle it with us. We have other duties as well. We, we uh, run the assignments to rooms. We're in charge of that. We're also in charge of... Uh, of, of the parking distribution. We got parking spaces and we're in charge of passing them out. Um, basically menial tasks. You like living here at the co-op? You oh, like being yes. a member? Yeah, co-op's a good place to live. Very good place to live. I don't <laughs> recommend it to any, uh, People make cracks about the food. Uh, food is an occupational hazard at any institution. You can't avoid the ba You can't avoid no matter what kind of institution, whether it be, whether it be a dorm, a co-op, a hospital, well, hospitals out here serve pretty good food, but most places, most institutional uh, settings, they don't, this food just isn't that good. You can't get and away it's from not good food. here. It's not good here. No. <laughs> but you make up for bad food and good people. We're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Robert, what do you think of the co-op dinner tonight? <laughs> I don't want any salad. <laughs> oh, really? Um... The dinner is, is, um, good. How about you, Melanie? What do you think of co-op food? Tasty stuff. Good. Tasty stuff. <laughs> you don't like it either, huh? How about you, Doug? It fills you up. It, it fills you up. Great. How about you, Shauna? Oh, I don't think about it. You don't think about it. Teddy? All right, okay. I didn't eat anything. <laughs> Let, let's tell the truth here. I've got more to say. You do. If I wasn't high, this uh -huh. shit would taste like I don't know what. Uh -huh. But right now, it's delicious. All right, we're in the kitchen now with Andy West, the KC. Morning KC here, Wednesday morning. It's approximately 6.45. I understand you've been here since 6, Andy. <laughs> what motivates you to get here at 6 o'clock in the morning? Well, I have to. That, that's my job. I have to open up the kitchen. On Wednesday breakfast. morning? That's right. What do you do as KC? Well, Come I on, kind let's of... go over here. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of oversee the operation of, uh -huh. of the breakfast and uh, help, you know, help cook the food. Uh -huh. How many workers do you have working for you here in the kitchen? Uh, the kitchen... The breakfast crew is about six people usually. Uh huh. Six people. That includes a couple outsides and a uh, you know a couple cooks, dishwasher or two. Uh, Great. 
drink. And what do you serve here in the morning for breakfast? Well, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it's hash browns and fried and scrambled eggs. Uh huh. Do you get very many complaints from people about the food? <laughs> we used to, but now there's kind of uh, they've come to terms with it. Like that. <laughs> um, I like working in the kitchen. It's it's uh, nicer than say. Uh, taking the trash out or something like that, cleaning bathrooms, which are also possibilities. <laughs> How and long have you lived uh, at the co-op, I've lived here about two years. Two years? How long have you been in KC? Uh, I've been in KC for about the last year. Uh -huh. when, in the morning? Usually in the morning, yeah. So, uh, would you consider this a typical co-op uh, dinner here tonight? No. No? <laughs> Can't find any rabbit pellets. <laughs> Cooperative one. Who? My roommate. Um, what's the name of Jessica? <laughs> That's me, Melanie. Hey. Call out. Call out, Masseuse. Out call. Out call, Masseuse. Out call, Masseuse. 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 Call out masseuse. Out call. Out call masseuse. <laughs> I don't have much experience with masseuses. <laughs> so, what do you think of cooperative living? <laughs> Your place of mine, baby. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do that on Oh, no. <laughs> it comes later, right? The driver and I are well integrated. <laughs> we're going to get you an A, Jessica, if it takes every joke I've got. <laughs>